I'm still a hypocrite, right? I, everything I teach you, I'm still teaching myself. Yeah, I was, I'm still going over what you told me about, like, you know, trying to figure out, you know, that'll probably take me a while. Uh -huh. But also, I was wondering, like, once I have my brand, like, I don't know how to, like, approach people in a way that like, makes me stand out and, like, show off what I have. You know what it is? It's connecting emotionally. That's so for me, I use, I use a very easy thing. So I say, oh, I like your tie. Where'd you get it? Right, I start finding things that we like and don't like, and then I start getting to the reasons that I want to talk to you, the impact we can have together, the capabilities by asking more questions. Oh, you know, what's the reason you want to talk to me? Right? Well, here, here's what if you know what if one of the reasons was this, and it was a reason that you had the capability for. Then at the end, you can say, can you see any reason? why you won't want to move forward or whatever, but it all starts with an emotional connection, and especially because people can't emotionally connect via the handhelds, that if you can look someone in the eye and move them, you're gonna change them. And it, the, in the future, it's gonna become more and more critical that you know how to do that. So I have like experience with digital marketing agencies like the last two years, but I, I'm trying to kind of focus into sports, trying to spin what I actually did into sports marketing. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, kind of figure out each individual jobs that you want, how you can emotionally attach to that person that you're gonna interview with. Could be that they like me, could be that they went to Tulane, it could be that it's a certain charity that they're working with, it could be a, that their big focus or primary love is digital marketing. So I always focus in on the emotional connection and then give all the logical reasons, impacts, and capabilities that I have in order to effectuate the job I want. So, I mean, the biggest thing for me is like figuring out what route to go down. I know you went to law school, so, but now like you, like the CEO of like a business. So. Yeah. Just how that intertwined, like how did you get from So I, I, I never really attach myself to some one thing, right? I was like you, I'm gonna this, 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 or this. So when I graduated law school, I, I, I went to law school to gain skills, knowledge, and inspiration. I was looking for jobs from legal aid to help people, you know, public defender, to high-powered litigator for oil and gas, to technology, because I wanted a, a growing field, an international field, and I ended up selling, right? And then, I, no way would you have thought, you know, it would take 10 years, but I'd get back into sports, or end up in the phone business, or, I just kept looking and evaluating the best opportunities. It's like, the analogy I could use, I hated this when I was the CEO of a public company. When I was raising money, what's your exit strategy? People ask you that all the time, right? What's your exit? I say, it's obvious. Every day I'll evaluate shareholder value. If someone came up to me today, I love my company. If someone came up to me and say, I'll give you a billion dollars for your company, i change my plan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you just don't know what opportunity. So for me, I'm looking at things consistently. The suddenness in life is only can be taken advantage, right? When you're in God's favor, the suddenness of things happening, of opportunity, only can ta uh, be taken advantage if you have a consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. If you're doing what you're doing right now, I'm, do I'm learning Mandarin, I'm doing this, I'm, I got double minor. That was me, man. English, poli sci, exercise science, going to a liberal arts school, study for law school, not sure if I wanted to go, then go, right? Just keep doing, yeah. provide value, and use guides like me, mentors, as you make your decision, say here's the assumptions I'm making. You make your own decision, but ask old guys like me what, what assumptions you're making, so I can tell you if the assumptions are true. It's the assumptions that are important, not the decision. If you're making the right assumptions, then the decision is in your gut, you'll know what to do. Does that sound fair? Nice. Awesome. I ask you, like, you know, being in the position that we're all in right now, you know, with honestly, like, classes and midterms and other things really to do, like, when, like, you get to where you are, you know, do you feel successful? Do you feel like it was all worth it for you? It's a lot, you know, like. Yeah, you made me cry. <laughs> Um, no, I always thought it was worth it. Like, I, I, 
I evolved, but I love telling myself, I get to do this, not I have to do this. Right. Like people here are like, thank you so much for coming and spending your weekend. And all I can think about in my mind is like, I get to come to New Orleans and help all these people and do all, you know, yeah, I'm making a priority choice. I'm, you know, have opening day for my eight-year-old son that I'm not going to be, but I'm leaving early so I can go see him tomorrow. I bounce it out, but every step of the way, if you can learn, like I get to take, I, like I put myself in this mind frame, uh, picking up my daughter. I, I might travel seven straight days, and all I want to do is spend time. And the minute I get home, my wife's like, "Can you go pick up the four, my 14-year-old daughter?" And in my mind, it initially says, "I have to do that." And then I think, "I get, I haven't seen her." Like a 14-year-old doesn't want to hang out with her dad. Now she's for, forced to be with me 30 minutes. It's just to be here at Tulane, yeah, right. to view your midterm. I was praying to get in, you know, you're right. Right, and then we I forget that, right? I you're forget. praying to get in, now you're like, shit, I got midterms, I got this. Is it worth it, is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. You've been giving a gift. Everything is literally a gift. If you look at it that way, you give meaning to everything that you see, give it the right meaning, feel blessed. That's where gratitude to me is so important. And yes, I wake up every morning pinching myself, going, wow, like I get to do this. So it's easy to get up. Yeah, even when I lost everything, it took me one day. I literally told myself, if I can look up, I can get up. And it, it was a lot of stress. But it was, I don't, people ask me all the time, what do you most regret about that losing everything or the problem? I don't regret, I got one single thing. I won't apologize to anyone. I've made huge mistakes. I've done things that are embarrassing and stupid, you know, that, you know, you, you don't want to publicly say, like going bankrupt. But I would rather people know who I am. I sur surrounded myself with the wrong people. I put my values in the wrong places. I was a manipulator in the past. I live my life the best I, I'm still a hypocrite, right? I, everything I teach you, I'm still teaching myself. Right. Oh, don't That's be afraid. Yeah, exactly. That's don't be afraid. I'm afraid. I wake up all the time. The difference is I go back to peace so much quicker. When I think I have to do something, I go back to I get to do it. If I feel like I'm afraid, no, I'm not. Right? I go back to center. I find Your peace. Is yeah. Well, it's practice, though. It's a muscle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, what is it? Like muscle memory. Of yeah. yeah. And, it's a, and I practice. Most people don't realize. I always say consistency is my New Year's resolution. Because if you can be consistent, you can change your life faster than anyone. And you get exponential results. I just try to be more and more consistent about what I believe. Yeah. It's those little decisions that let lead to the big one. It is. And if you're doing this stuff every day, the suddenness of life, the stuff that it was like, oh, suddenly I met this guy, Lee Steinberg, and he made me CEO of the most notable sports agency. Yeah, yeah that happened suddenly. But I had a whole long lead up, lead up that literally made me prepared for it. I was ready for that opportunity. Other people had the same opportunity. I'm not the first person that Lee Steinberg met. Right. I wasn't looking for a job. For the right exactly, because I, I kept preparing myself for what the universe was going to give me. Right. And then, so what about consistency was involved in that? Yeah, so it's just the consistency for me of prioritizing every day. So for me, my consistent things are one, an hour a day on my health, right? Like every exercise. single day. Just not exercise, men meditation. Stretching. I'm old. I have to stretch because I'm sitting a lot. Yeah. Notice I'm one of the few people of this area. Yeah. Right. I got to. And I stretch on the air. So it's just uh, my health. And even if I can spend two minutes to prepare for diet or just get in the habit, like to ask him because right, he travels with me so much. And I'll say, oh, should, should I go get dessert? No. no. Right. <laughs> okay. Can, can I get a happy meal? Well, he will. He'll also say, yeah. Like, I'll say, can I get a happy meal? Because I love McDonald's. I didn't want to tell that Burger King guy. But <laughs> I literally just went and got Popeyes after this. I love Popeyes, too. So he'd be happy with that. Yeah. And yeah. so it is just a practice up here. Yeah. Everyone's life is awesome. I've been to Kenya, and these people have nothing, and they smile all day. Right. They live in a world of more than enough. So next time you're thinking, is this worth it? Say, how could it not be? I'm here. Yeah. How could this? I think I love it. Like you're so wise because you said to yourself, "I begged to get in here. I was like praying to get in." Like, right. Was, once I got that scholarship, I was like, "Oh." I know. And my daughter too. She's a sophomore. Yeah, yeah. And you forget it. Yeah, I, totally. Like. I, I'm like complaining. I here. like I do that with my own wife because like that's my dream. My my dream girl is my wife. I loved her in the fourth grade. She rejected me in the sixth grade. I, 
I, I mean, I pined over like going out there. And so anytime I get mad, I'm thinking to myself, Wait same thing, right? Same thing. Right. Like I begged for her, yeah. right? And now I'm like, and you were persistent. Yeah. yeah. I was also gonna ask about persistency too, but I feel like it consistency and persistence yeah. go together. But it's the enjoyment of the pursuit that's the key, right? Enjoyment of the pursuit of your potential. But you got to know what your potential is, why you want it, and then the how comes easy. The difference of the why to the how for me is faith, and that's the mindset. If nobody understands how does perspective become reality, yeah. like how does your mindset become a reality it's really one ingredient faith whatever that is that you believe in right. because faith, faith brings discipline strategy and awareness That's when like you're capable right like being a, you have faith by going back and saying oh but I begged to get in here when I got a scholarship and now I'm stressed because there's a midterm I feel like I'm being punished yeah. no you're blessed right yeah I'm blessed to go sit in this class like this place like a country club compared to what most people get to, to do exactly. in life I want to work in sports marketing but the, the one thing that I'm trying to it's a huge up, industry so you yeah. pick it exactly. grows every year. Exactly. And so I'm, I'm wondering like, if you have any advice on like, the best way to sort of break into it, because I'm sort of struggling with like, the first job, like if you yeah. put the door or ask it. Develop the marketing skills. Yeah. Don't worry about the sports side of it. Mm -hmm. When you're entering, because if you develop your marketing skills, you'll be better off and you'll get paid more when you start yeah. not being in sports. Mm -hmm. And you'll have less competition moving laterally yeah. than up. Now, if you find something you're super in love with, like you get a marketing job with your favorite sports team, you can work your way up. It's going to take a long time. But if you go to a marketing agency that may represent and do stuff around sports, like events, or but you get paid way more, you build your brand, and then you apply over in three years saying, oh, I ran, you know, the Wheels Up account, I ran the Ferrari account, I ran yeah. the, the, uh, the Masters account, whatever. Yeah. And then the agency over here is like, oh, we need this guy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I would do. And then, yeah, because I've been told by professors and that like the best way to get in, especially if you want to work for an actual franchise, would be to start in sales and like- Yeah, sort of ticket sales. Your, yeah, like, would you agree with that? That's like, one way to do it. I, I Maybe I'm biased because I move laterally into things. Okay. I, I want to get the most skills I can, the most knowledge I can, for the most money I can when I start something. I would love to hear kind of any advice you have on like what you would look for in an entry level candidate. I look for four things. So kind of like uh, Jose was saying, I, I look for someone that has a gracious perspective. So they're just grateful for everything. A forgiving person. So I'll ask them, tell me about the worst thing someone's done to you and then ask how you feel about it and see if you're forgiving. I'll see how accountable you are. So I'll look at your biggest mistakes and have you explain to me how you're accountable for it or ask you if you're accountable or do you you know, live in blame, shame, or justification. And then the most important thing I look for is effective communication. So not only how well you can inspire me or connect emotionally with me or whoever else you're interviewing with, but how, how inspired are you? Right? Because I, I can't inspire everyone in my company. So, you know, I always connect this way first to what inspires me. So I can be inspired all day long, have more energy than anyone, be more statistically successful, have a better attitude, because that's what creates productivity and accessibility. I'm more productive than almost anyone I know and more accessible. So I'm accessible to you, but I also access what I want. And that duality of accessibility is real value. So when I'm looking at someone, I really don't care. I mean, it's nice that you studied this stuff. I can teach you that. But I'm looking for the right people um, that are gonna inspire and live in like, anyone that comes to my office, the first thing they say is, I love the energy in here. That's the uh, culture that I wanna maintain. That's what I wanna maintain in my business. I, I want an expansive environment, a highly actualizing, actualizing environment where everyone's aligned with not only the work side of it, but also the imagination side of it and the, those four values. Hi, Nicole. I'm a senior in marketing and, and management now a major. I feel like it's hard to like not be just one of the masses and make yeah. you know, every day. So you have one thing that no one else has. And it's so hard when you're your age to understand it, but you're the only you. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm sitting here and I've had 30 people come and tell me, they're a senior, they're a marketing major, you all went to Tulane. Yeah. I'm looking at the resume, like does anyone get any B's because like everyone has great grades. Yeah. 
but you're you. So what makes you you? How can you emotionally connect to me? So maybe you come from a similar background to me with a single mom and didn't grow up with a lot of money and got a scholarship to college and you're so grateful and that you're willing to do anything to be successful in your life and you want to do this. Whatever is you, and then ask questions about what you want to know about the job. Realize that every job's not for you. And it's, I applied to so many jobs out of desperation when I was in law school because I, I wanted to make money, yeah. And the best interview I had was the guy said, you're the most qualified person for this job. I would love to hire you for this job. He said, your uncle's my friend. Your resume is extraordinary. He said, but I'm going to do you a favor. I'm not going to give you the clerkship. I was crushed. I go, wh wh why? He goes, because you're too big for this job. He goes, this isn't what you're supposed to do. You, you, you cannot sit here and do legal research all day in a cubby hole. I know it's going to pay you a lot of money, but you, you work for Major League Baseball. You sell shoes in the morning. You, like he's going down all these things. You're, this isn't a good job for you, and I'm going to do you a favor and not give it to you. So just realize by putting yourself out there and, and sacrificing, but you, you know, letting somebody know like this is more than a job. I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to find out if this is what I want to do and grow and learn from you. Connect emotionally. You got plenty of logical reasons to hire you, right? There's all good reasons in here. I can list out 10 just by looking at it. And so does everyone else, right? So tell, explain to people in your interview what skills you learned at those. Don't yeah. worry about them being different. Okay. Say, here's the skills I learned, the knowledge that I gained, yeah. the relationships that I made, and this is my desire. Okay. Right? So skills, knowledge, relationship, and this is my desire. Effectuate your desire. Say, this is what I want. Okay. Not, will you give it to me? Yeah. The energy is, this is what I want. And this is what I'm gonna bring exactly. Yeah. My skills, my knowledge, my relationships. That's value. Okay. And then say... For these reasons, impacts, and capabilities that I explained, I'd like an opportunity to do this. Is that possible? Or can you see any reason why you won't want me to do this? Yeah. That's out there? Yeah. My questions would be how to get your foot in the door because it's such a competitive industry. Like, they didn't Ask even for help. My... Yeah. In that industry, number one, there's two things you need to do. Ask for help. Okay. Which I'm happy to help, and I'll give you other people to help. But you got to be willing to start for nothing. Yeah. Like, I, my, one of my good friends is Mike Tannenbaum. He went to law school with me here. And he always says, I got so lucky because he's a GM of the Jets. That's a pretty good job, right? That's a really good job. Yeah. Well, and he's always saying, I got lucky. He's like, I go, I, I graduated with you. You went to work for the Saints for $600 a month. I was a millionaire in nine months going, I would never have done that. But everyone thinks you're lucky. For two years, he has Jewish parents. I couldn't imagine having $100,000 worth of loans telling my mom, oh, I'm going to work for the Saints for 600 bucks and be bankrupt before I start. Yeah. That's what he sacrificed. So as long as you're willing to ask for help mm -hmm. and you're willing to sacrifice and start, yeah. you'll I get mean, a like job. I sports, like soccer's be my passion. Yeah, so that's like, great. They wouldn't even be working for nothing for me. Because well, I, I believe there's no work. I believe activity yeah. you get paid for, activity you don't get paid for. <laughs>